Welcome back to Lauren the Amazon Princess Adventures! Wee! Separate screens? I don't wanna I don't wanna click that, I don't know what happens. Alright, we've talked to everyone and and now we are on our way to Mount Kronos because we you know we were in jail a bit and stuff. I don't know what these mean. Anyways, there's some evil dude somewhere. So we know that. Uh, this is where the elves are. Um, and and yeah, we're going to Mount Kronos. Because adventures. The party was already well into their journey. The terrain was difficult to navigate, but made easier with the help of their new companion. Along the way, they were surprised to find an overturned cart right in their path. Who left this here? Hold. Show yourself. Out from behind the cart jumps a large and dangerous looking dwarf brandishing his axe. Stay away, Ladia. You'll ne'er get your hands on these goods. Eleanor lowered her weapon, realizing that the dwarf was only protecting the cart, not ambushing them. We cannot just leave him here, your highness. He looks like he's been out here for days. I can handle myself. Stay away from my cart. He wants us to leave him. He looks like he's starving. Please, I beg of you, help him. Lauren rested her eyes on the dwarf, and he seemed to shake where he stood. It was clear that he was malnourished, but too prideful to leave his cart behind. She grabbed the water skin from her hip and threw it at him. Drink. What is your name, dwarf? Ra Ramos. And then he poured the water into his mouth like he hadn't had a drop in days. Haven't you had any water? It's mead. Lots of it. He guessed, gestured to, to the scattered barrels near his cart. You're a merchant, aren't you? Aye. At least, he used to be until my blast a wagon lost his wheel. Not much of anything now. Don't see that. You'll still be an amazing merchant when you get back. Ramos blinked, staring deeply at the female dwarf trying to comfort him. He looked as if he were in a trance. Aye. Are there any goods we can purchase from you? We have a long trip ahead of us, and we may restore your merchant's honor yet. Of course I got goods to sell. Just take a look. Alright. Okay, so she can use all of these. Ooh, I mean she gets minus speed. She does get plus 12 in damage. Wait, wait price 750? Uh... Discount 75. Uh, no. Can't buy any of your stuff, dude. Can't buy any of your stuffs. Oh, wait, here. No. Um. No, I don't have enough money to buy any of your stuffs. Uh, maybe I could sell something, but. Precious gem. You can sell to merchants to get some gold. Price 80, v vendors offer 40. Nope. Ramos regained a colorful disposition and happily showed the party his goods. After a few purchases, he seemed not only happier, but healthier. He still couldn't keep his eyes off of Dora, however. Thank you very much. It's the least we could do. Bandits attacked me, and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't just leave my cart in the middle of nowhere. Those are just things. You'd risk your life for material possessions? Being a merchant is all I've known, lady. With that axe, I would assume you know something of battle, too. Oh, this old thing? We've been together for a long time. If you know how to use that axe, then we may require your services. We can pay, of course. Pay? After what you just did for me? I'm following you guys to the end of the world. That's the spirit! <laughs> he wants to follow Dora to the end of the world. Dora jumped up and Ramas smiled excitedly. I agree. Dwarves are a powerful people and would be wise to have by our side. Will you join us, Ramos? He glanced over at Dora one more time. Yeah, couldn't keep me away. <laughs> then it's settled. Your help in retrieving the sword will be valuable indeed. <gasps> we got Ramos, warrior! Yes, finally a warrior. And so a new member joined their ranks. They wasted no more time and continued towards their goal. Dora explained to Ramas their quest to retrieve an ancient sword in return for their freedom. He seemed to hang on her every word. I never doubted Ramas for a moment. I knew I could trust him, even if we had just met. 
I knew because I could tell that he had fallen in love with Dora at first sight. Love is what makes heroes of us all. While ascending the mountain, they heard the haunting calls of orcs in the distance. Hunting calls. Haunt, no, haunting calls. Okay. They could not believe that such creatures roosted in these hills, but they kept their eyes open. Did you see that? See what? I thought I saw something over on that patch of snow. Everyone stared at the snow around them, but saw nothing. I suppose you're so jumpy from... Large snow orcs sprang out from piles of snow and roared at them. They had set a trap, waiting for fresh meat. View your party set up before proceeding. Ah. Go, Ramos. I need you. Right, let's go. Let's go. Let's battle. Let's battle. Okay, who's first? Ooh, okay. Oof. Take him at the back there. Ah. Uh, oh, it, yeah, because that's a healer. We don't. We don't want the him. We want him gone. Okay, what can you do, dude? Paralyze. Actually, you know what? Paralyze the. No. I don't know. It's single target with normal damage for 100% of character's base attack and a 75% chance of causing paralyzed condition for three turns. You know what? Let's do it. Fire! Oh, fire is probably good to <laughs> against snow. Works. Oh wait, what can he do? Oh no, because he's paralyzed. Aha. Here we go. Yeah, he can heal, so we need him dead. Ow! Yes, he's paralyzed. Uh, he's still paralyzed, so we'll just do that again. Uh, Lauren. Fireball. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Good job, Draco. I'll protect you. I'll protect you. Two lives left. Uh, I like how Ramas isn't doing crap in this fight. Literally nothing. We toast one. Uh, 55 gold, a buckler, an amethyst, standard sword, and a buckler. No one uses a shield, but one I know, but. More precious gems! Cool, no one got level. And we still got 162 exp. Actually, Draco is really close to level, so that's cool. Ha, ha. I knew I saw something. Your dwarf eyes are proving useful. What about my dwarf eyes? They're always on somebody else's things. <laughs> Dora pouted and pretended that she hadn't heard that. The party wound down as the sun set and they set up camp. They were sore from their many battles and tried tired from the endless walking. They huddled close around the campfire on account of how chilly the air was that night. Everyone that was except for Draco. Your fire mage, where is he? They all looked around and could not even spot even a trace of him. A polymesho scowled. He has been acting odd since the very beginning. What are you implying? A man who acts that way that he does is hiding something. He could be a spy, perhaps. The man a spy? Who would ever hire that fool? Elder druid Mirth is apt to hire fools. And foolery is a clever disguise. You do well not to forget that all are not as they seem. Maybe that was why he was like, the druids and elves are nicer. I don't know. Draco? Nah. Maybe silly, but it's not. It couldn't be. A lot of spies in this territory, though. Elves don't let any imperial humans walk around the territory. So the Empire has to hire elves to spy for them. And the other way around, too. 
Eleanor straighted, straightened with a start. Draco isn't human. He's a half-elf. Polymesho stood up abruptly, scanning the trees. I knew that he was not to be trusted. Why? Simply because he is part elf? The magician did not respond because he knew it to be true. Racist jerk. Not all elves are untrustworthy. Eleanor is proof of that. She looked over at her companion. Eleanor felt touched that Lauren had come to trust her, even though she had just been a servant in the beginning. That has yet to be seen. Excuse me? Elnor stood up, causing Lauren to rise and step in front of her as a warning to settle down. A twig cracked behind them and they all looked over in surprise as Draco, at Draco walking back into camp. What's a standing ovation for? I just need to drain the lizard. Lauren... <laughs> So that's what it's called, is it? <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Lauren and Eleanor shared a look, unsure if he was telling the truth. That is why you hide your ears behind your hair. What? You mean to hide that you're part elf from the Empire? What, what is this all about? Did I forget something? Confess your true intentions at once, or I shall use magic to draw them out of you. Lauren shot a confused look at Eleanor for guidance. Why don't you trust him? He has fought with us bravely for all of this time. I see no reason to fear him, honestly. Do not forget how he followed us before he was even a member of our party. That was... Was what, Firestarter? The actions of a spy. Polymesho raised his staff towards Draco menacingly. Just then... High-pitched screeching pierced everyone's ears and they clasped their heads in pain. What is that awful noise? Shadow men, stay behind me, I'll protect you. Shadow creatures? Eleanor tried to catch a glimpse of what was tormenting them, but only flashes of darkness could be seen briefly. And then, suddenly, a hulking dark form presented itself right in front of her. <gasps> More fights! Okay, okay, let's go. Hoo hoo! Yes! Oh, hoo! What is. Okay, Draco. No, Eleanor's first. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I don't know really. This one maybe? Yes, please just attack my warriors. Stop. Stop. Uh, I don't know. He, he, he can't do- well, I mean, he can paralyze them, but like, okay. Uh, sure, let's do that, I guess. Fireball. Yeah! Uh, okay, Mr. Dwarf, do something for once. Ramos again. Lauren again. Okay, seriously, stop attacking Draco. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, burn. Yeah, I know. Oh. Um. Actually, let's kill him. Well, we can. He's burned too, so. Um. Whee! We found an agate, an aquamarine, and another agate. We have we got 81 gold and three level ups because we got 222 experience. Yes, and lots of other people level up soon too. 
We have one skill point. Um, kind of want more maximum. I kind of just want to work on maximum hit points at this point. <laughs> this, uh, actually, string and yeah, I like hit points. So there you go. This dude. Uh, I gave him that. Oh yeah, he does not have skill points. Yep. And the Ulmus Dwarf. No, you know what? We'll just give you skill. Here we go. They huffed and caught their breaths. Before Draco could recover, a Polymesha whipped his staff towards him, entangling the Fire Mage in a web of light. The light coiled around him and bound him tight. You set those shadows upon us. Chomping caterpillars, how many times do I have to say you're wrong about me? Get these things off me, they hurt my eyes. Sir, he did fight those creatures alongside us. Of course he would, so that we would trust him again. Just how long has the Empire hated elves so that they need to imprison them on sight? The old mage was silent, focusing on restraining Draco with his magic. Eleanor knew he was also silent because he didn't want to answer. It's the same for dwarves, but she's right. The elves do get trouble every day from you folk. Is this true? Is your suspicion of Draco merely because he is part elf? I didn't ask to be born with pointy ears. I want to be born a dragon, actually. I have him bound because shadow men only come when called. Someone called these creatures to us. He must have done it. Shadow men follow the call of their master's crystal. That's the only one. They're mighty rare. Search his things. Eleanor reluctantly walked over to Draco's private bag and unfurled it. Careful with that. Silence. Inside were his simple belongings. Spare clothes, a secret sta stash of rations, a mirror, and a tightly bound heavy object. Eleanor tensed when she reached for it. Pulling it out and unwrapping the heavy object revealed a bright, shining stone in the darkness. The entire party gaped at the glowing rock. Bless my beard. Draco? You you really are? What? Well, the Meshul silenced him with a quick whack of his staff and magic fell around Draco. His eyes fluttered as if he were drunk and under a polymeshal or under a polymeshal's complete control. I think that the goblins put it in his bag. You have lied to this party and put us all in danger. You will reveal your secrets to us at once. I will reveal my secrets. Sir, no! You have in your hands the proof of his treachery. Your Highness? Interrogate him. Eleanor frowned, but she knew it to be true. If he had this crystal, then he called those shadow men to attack them. She still could not believe he was capable of such things, however. Tell us your secret, Draco Firestarter. My secret. My secret is... Party leaned in closer, boiling with anticipation to know who had hired him. I do not think Lauren is attractive. Uh... Lauren drew her sword, but Eleanor restrained her. <laughs> Unforgivable rat! No, the crystal! Show it to him! Who gave you this crystal? He brought the glowing crystal in front of Draco and his cloudy eyes lazily found it. Oh, shiny thing. Who gave you this? Who hired you? Druid Mirth? Out with it! No one hired me. Polymesha was silent for a moment. That's impossible. Are you not an agent, but a direct enemy of one of us here? Enemy? I want to be your friend. Can I have the shiny rock? It's so... shiny. I don't think he knew he had it. Has your magic failed, old mage? Or does he speak the truth? Even the old wizard could not believe what he had heard. Do you mean this party any ill will? No. I like you guys. Even though Lauren's a meanie. Rat! <laughs> Polymesha waved his hand, and the clouds from Draco's eyes disappeared, as well as the light that was binding him. What just happened? Oh, my head hurts. They were silent for a while, feeling guilty for what they had just done to him. We found this crystal in your belongings. 
Mine? Are you sure? I've never seen that before in my life. Someone wants to cause a war. His sudden vindictiveness drew everyone's attention. Slipping that stone into a party traveling into elven territories was a conscious decision on someone's part to start a war. A war? Over a stone? It is not the crystal that offends. These shadow men had arrived while we were in an elven town. We would all have been killed as spies. I am the Arch Wizard of the Council of Elders of Grimoire. They would take that personally and declare war. We are fortunate that this attack came when it did. We were just attacked, so I do not consider this fortunate in any way. Whatever tensions may be between humans and elves is not my concern. So I'm not even going to get an apology? I think my forehead is starting to swell. Being cautious is the only trait that keeps you alive. I'll apologize for the bump on your head and nothing more. You brought this upon us whether you knew it or not. You let your guard down yet again and let someone sneak something into your bag. We've lost our chance to sleep thanks to you and now must press on. Already? We've just set up camp. We'd risk more shadow creatures if we were to stay. Lauren grabbed the crystal, slammed it to the ground, shattering it into pieces. Move out. Yes, your highness. Lauren had been a cold-hearted woman in the beginning. When I remember her now, it is hard not to think of her as a completely different person. Oh! Well, we can't go back, apparently. Camp! Hello! I don't know if we can romance people in camp, but okay. That was some ordeal with Apollimesho and Draco. Yes, but I'm glad it's resolved. Elnor had been thinking of the event over and over since it happened. I... I wanted to thank you for sticking up for me. Huh? When the arch wizard accused elves of being sneaky, you said you trusted me. Oh, that. Yes. You've had plenty of opportunities to kill me and have your freedom, but you have not. Elnor had never once considered escaping, Lauren. <gasps> Let's do it! It means a lot to me that you trust me. I was worried that you would treat me just as a slave for the whole time. But I feel like you actually respect me. Lauren took in a breath. I respect your strength in battle and mind in conversation. Elnor smiled warmly. Yes, that's what I meant. The mood turned awkward as neither of them had said anything. Eventually, Eleanor nodded and left. <gasps> Laura's affection increased! <gasps> Lauren! <laughs> Lauren! So, uh, is it true that the big lady is that, that big lady is a princess? Yes, of the Amazons in the West. Wow. Dora's eyes glimmered. She live in a big glittery castle, lots of gold and such? Hmm, not particularly. The citadel is made of stone. The royals prize fur and pelts above weak metals. Weak? Gold and silver are precious metals. They're pretty and self atones of coin. Yes, but the Amazons have no use for metal that they can't make a weapon out of. Gold is rather soft. Guess that's true. How boring. So it's just all about war with her then? More or less. That is how her culture is. Strength is their highest virtue. Oh, I see. I guess she ain't like a princess that I was imagining. I suppose not. But she's still a powerful ally. That's true and all. But would she be able to give me, give me a fancy reward? Amazons make excellent bows. I think she'd give you one of their best. A new bow? Hmm, I think I'd actually like that. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, well, that's just my guess. But Dora was already daydreaming about her new weapon to be. <laughs> that's your big secret? What? What secret? Do you even remember what you said while under a polymesho's spell? No. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't say too much. Just enough. What did I say? What's my big secret? You said you didn't find Lauren attractive. Draco slammed his palm onto his face. What exactly is wrong with that? Lauren wouldn't kill you if you don't think she's attractive. It's... It's not really about her. Eleanor scooted closer to him, catching on. 
Why don't you just tell me who you do think is attractive? <laughs> oh my god! Eleanor! Even I understand that that is not subtle, okay? I mean, I suck at these things, but even I understand that that is not subtle. Draco mumbled something and looked away. Can you say that a bit louder? Um... Ramos? Eleanor burst out laughing, picturing Draco with a short hairy dwarf cracked her up. Yeah, that's why it's a secret. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She drank in the fire mage, seeing him with new eyes. I had no idea. Women are pretty, I just... find men a bit prettier. Uh, handsomer. <laughs> You're telling me. They smiled and shared a moment of understanding. <gasps> oh my gosh, Draco! <laughs> He's so cute, though. I can't believe these, those shadow men came after us. That's something I thought I'd never see. You only hear stories about that stuff. You lot run in some crazy situations all the time, don't you? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, trouble seems to follow us. Don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying it. I've been rusting on my wagon for too long. Now I'm finally back in the thick of things, getting my axis exercise. I need more than just to stretch my legs. I'm finally getting out and living. I feel young again. It sure does sound like you're having fun. He chuckled heartily. You'd be surprised. I don't know if I want to talk to this dude, but okay. You're an arch wizard? What does that mean? You ask the most insultingly simple questions that I have ever been subjected to. But I do recognize you are not from the Empire, so I will help eradicate your ignorance. I'm a member of the Council of Grimoire, which is the head of government for the entire Empire. I represent the Wizards Guild, and therefore all of wizardry. So, are you the best wizard? I believe you will find that quite subjective. Sorry, I'm just curious. There are tiers in wizardry, and I am a high rank, yes, but I will certainly not boast of being the most superior. At least, not when it comes to magic. I don't talk to Lauren again. Your Majesty, if I might ask, now that we're traveling together, I would like to know what you expect of me. What kind of question is this? Everything I need you for. That's what a servant is for. I... I see. I saw your princess, even though I have left the citadel. Yes, I was not doubting that at all, ma'am. It's only that I am not used to this type of servitude. I've already told you that your bed tricks are useless to me. Yes, I know. I was hoping you could tell me how best to serve you. Hmm. All my slaves stood five paces away from me at all times, and they did not look me in the eyes. Eleanor immediately averted her eyes and took several steps back. Lauren evaluated her. No, that looks odd when there's only one of you. You may stand closer. Eleanor shuffled back. Behind we. Behind me, when I'm not addressing you. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, mistress. It was a small victory for her to be allowed more intimacy with Lauren. Perhaps, when they came to know each other more, Lauren would stand with respect next to her. Eleanor would stand with respect next to her. But we already have a heart for Lauren, oh my gosh! Lauren! Draco is so cute, though. Draco is cute. They're all kind of cute, actually. Um, But uh, we're going to take a break right here. I'm going to save the game. There we go. Uh, here we go. So, that was it for this time. Thank you all very much for watching and sharing this game with me. Hope you're enjoying it. And, you know, my voice acting. Uh, I know, I'm trying to give the dwarves the, an accent. I don't know, I should probably maybe give elves another accent too. I don't know. Um, sort of trying. <laughs> I hope it's not too bad. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll see ya.